All right, so we have saved our work. We're building it to be at least as big as we need, and we're getting some nice connections now along the spine, into the tail, across the back. Now I'm going to work on the wings a little bit because those need to connect kind of where the, the collarbone is on this bat. The bat's wings are conveniently folded up. So what I'm going to do is just erase away. Instead of using the lasso, I can start to blend a little bit. So I'm just going to erase away this layer, this bat layer. Come on, select it for me. To reveal those wings behind. And to do that, I'm going to use my eraser tool, just like we did with the last project. I'm going to use it very large, like around 300 pixels, by very soft, zero degree hardness at 100% opacity. And I'm going to use it pressure sensitive for size. And I'm going to use my tablet so that I can just start trimming this away with a soft edge. Start blending in those wings. And I'll see how much is actually useful in the joint that's already there. So I could also do this with a three pixel feather on my lasso. And then kind of combine the bird wings with the bat wings. And just trim this edge away. Same thing on this side. I think this is all going to work. I know I don't need the bat's head, but I don't want to lose any overlap that can be helpful. So I'm going to use some of this from the wings. And trim all of this away. This away. And then I can go to the wings themselves. I'm not doing a super refined cutout yet because I don't know quite how the head's going to fit into it, but I can start to select out these edges on this wing. And I can try just using the magic wand again, selecting this negative space out here, holding down shift, adding to it, as long as it's not getting rid of too much of the wing. And then this is with a one pixel feather. There's even this weird little uh, overlap here. Delete that. Delete it again. Delete it again. Feathers are particularly difficult to cut out because they're translucent. You know, they're made of the same material as our fingernails. So even though they might have color to them, light is shining through them. So they'll get a little bit of a glow anyway. And so when you're pulling it from reference, you have to kind of trim that away with a soft edge. That's where the the feathering really comes in. So I'm going to try doing that again. No pun intended with the feathering. But I'm going to try it with a three pixel feather this time. Come on. Select it. This is a lot for, for Photo P to deal with. And it might, in fact, be too much for Photopea to deal with right now. So I'm going to deselect, and I'm going to crop down, because I know I don't need all of this empty space anymore. I want to keep my sketch in there. But now I have the bulk of my references in. So I'm going to save some memory by cropping and then saving. And then if I want to clear the cache of memory, like all the history states that it's remembering, I can always just close Photo P, because I've saved it, reopen Photo P. I can even restart my browser and close all these windows I don't need open, and then just drag my file in. 
and that will help it to run a little bit more efficiently. So the last step I was doing was cutting out this wing. I don't know why it doesn't want to... Oh, there it is. It's because I was on the wrong layer. What was layer 11? All right. Huh. All right, so let's try it again. I think I accidentally made a duplicate in there waiting for it to process. So I'm going to use the magic wand with the three pixel feather and then select the empty space. Photos, these raster programs are very good at selecting empty space and then delete, and you'll see it will bite away at that, that kind of bluish edge. And we'll leave that kind of translucence at the edge of each tip of the feather. So whatever background it's on, that will come through. So that worked quite well. Good. Now I need to do it on this side of the wing. Same setting, same feather. But I don't want it to select this. All right. Delete, 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 delete. It will keep biting away until there's no kind of blues there coming through. Now, there might be little residuals, like there's a little white there, a little white there, but that could all be cleaned up at the end. You can always just go in and cut those out. No big. Okay. So now the, those kind of dopey wings are roughly cut. What if I try blending now just really simply this frog leg bottom. There it is. From this chest, right? All that takes is an eraser at 100% opacity. Pretty large, about 300 pixels. Pressure sensitive for size at 0% hardness. And then just like we did with the interior of the cave in assignment one, I'm going to start getting rid of that hard edge. Just the hard edge first, obliterating that. And then going to a lower opacity. And that will start to blend it. So I can have a little bit of this fur go into the this reptilian skin or the amphibious skin of this frog and I can kind of blend them into each other. I've even got a belly button, which is kind of weird. I don't know if I like that belly button, so I might avoid that because that might be something else. Now we can do a lot more to match colors and things later, but this is just getting kind of the placement where you want it. You can do the same thing with the wing and the side of the bat. There. And I can do a little bit with the top of the bat's head. Right? I can take it up to 100% opacity, trim this away. reveal the, the wing. Okay, for the tail, I'm just going to kind of leave it for now. There's a lot to cut away there. And now I'm going to focus more on the cutouts of the head. So save my work, Command S. <coughs> and 
now that I've put kind of the body together, before I move to the head, I can group all the body parts together into one folder so I can move it together. So that's all these layers. Select them all, hold down shift, select all those layers, click on the folder icon, and then I'm just going to call this the body. So now that pad of the factory, they've bolted together their rough components. Whoops. It's all in this folder. If I uncheck auto select or if I do auto select folder or group, then it will move it all together. And it can even transform it all together with option command T, like to match my sketch a little bit better. I can change its angle, right? And if I want to, I can even play with distorting it. It won't let me warp it, but it will let me do these other things, like stretch it. So that the whole front of the body gets larger in perspective. So that's why I like to do the, the body separate from the head, because they can work at very different angles, and then they can be bolted together. So I think I like that because it's more compressed and more like my sketch than it was before. All right. Okay, now the head. So I need the neck to kind of flow down. I can lock the body for now so I don't accidentally mess with it. And I want to look at these layers. So I have the eyes and these kind of feathers on the head. I've got the upper jaw, I've got the lower jaw. So what can I do? Well, first, I want there to be some color and some interest. So I'm going to go through my image adjustments for the top level of the head, the eyes and those feathers. I'm going to start with levels. And I'm going to try to make them kind of match what's underneath. So I'm going to play with brightening or darkening those levels. I'm actually going to brighten the midtones just a little bit. Maybe darken the shadows just a smidge. Actually, I could try limiting the highlights too with this bottom slider. Just a tiny bit. Actually, no. I'll keep them high. Now I go to color balance. So levels first, then color balance. Color balance makes a big difference. So even though the eye color matches, I want this to feel a little bit warmer, so in the mid-tones I'm going to push it a little bit towards red, a little bit towards yellow. And then in the sh highlights I'm going to push it a little bit towards red, a little bit towards yellow. And the, but in the shadows I'm going to push it the other way, a little bit towards cyan and a little bit towards blue. So difference from there to there, right? It just kind of sits within that color temperature a little bit better. And now I can play with hue saturation. I'm going to try to up that saturation. There we go. I can intensify it. So you get those oranges, not just in the eyes, but in the actual feathers and textures. And then I can even take it from the master saturation and go right to just the blues. And I can try to intensify those. And darken them a little or even shift them to a different color. Same thing with the cyans, with the greens. This is what I can do. What's nice about that is now that's very different than when it came in like that, which looks very grayscale. Now when I start to blend and erase away with my soft eraser, it's going to be a lot more forgiving as I blend these feathers from the owl, get rid of that hard edge first, and blend it into the scales of the snake. Even if at this point there are four eyeballs, or at least three that are showing. Now that allows me to go to a lower opacity and start to blend it. 